Oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, what's up and welcome everyone to another Warzone Academy video. And today we're showing you the advanced sniper guy that you guys have been waiting so long for. Now we actually had a wildly successful video with the controller sniper guide. That's where we talk about specific techniques and sniping for controllers. If you guys are interested in that, check out that video in the description. But everything we're talking about here will also cross apply the controllers. You're at a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to sniping. So make sure also to check out that video. But you guys know, anytime you see the Warzone Academy thumbnail, anytime you see the chalkboard, you know we're going to get into the details. So there's a lot of value here. If you're excited for it, make sure to hit the like button. If you have gained any value of this video, make sure to subscribe and uh, let's get right into it. So before we actually get on to hitting the snipes, let's go ahead and make sure we're prepared with the right settings and the right loadouts. Now, this is very important. This is some of these settings you may not have seen before. So settings for one, if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, if you're playing on controller, all the specific controller settings I mentioned in that video, if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, make sure your mouse DPI is set to either 400, 800, 1600, or 3200. They're all multiples of each other. There's an issue for some reason in the language with the PC. It's gotten better over the years, but there still is a possibility of pixel skipping if you're not set to one of those set DPIs. So once again, 400, 800, 1600, 3200. For some reason, they speak really well to the PC. And if you're otherwise, you might get some erroneous inputs. So once you have your DPI set to that, I now have mine set to 4.15. Now I have a lightweight mouse. I've got a nice little paracord on it so I don't get a lot of drag. It pretty much feels like a wireless mouse. But then I also have a very, very wide mouse pad. You look down on the hand cam, like I am making almost a full arms reach across the mouse pad. So I've got a lot of room. When I want to make very minor adjustments, I can. But if I need to make a sweep, I can sweep all the way across my mouse pad buy a bigger mouse pad if this setting doesn't work for you maybe you have a smaller mouse pad smaller desk just up the sensitivity as required just keep one of those set dpis and adjust the sensitivity this is what i run with right here now one of the other things you need to make sure you're running is in order to snipe an enemy you need to be able to see them now if you have not already checked out my advanced graphics guide it's so crucial i'm able to spot people across the map so easily look at the difference right here this is what my settings on. The, the game looks bright, colorful, vibrant. This isn't post-production. This is what I see on screen. This is what the game looks like without it. It's very kind of kind of grainy, gray, dull. There's not much contrast. It's tough to spot enemies, especially across the map. But when you put on this filter, it like cuts away the haze. So not only in multiplayer, but especially in Warzone, when you're going through dark places like Superstore, or you're looking all the way across the map, this is crucial. That's going to be the second video link. The first one will be the controller. Second one will be the graphic settings. Make sure to apply these filters if you have not already. Cool. So now we're set up. We've got the settings all set to go. Now let's talk about the weapons themselves. Me personally, I only recommend sniping with two snipers. If you're going for a faster snap, you're trying to be a little bit more of a style, run the car 98. If you're going for a longer range, maybe you're playing really sweaty, really tactical, run the HDR. Let's talk about the other two options, the AX50. Don't run it. It has a, it's basically where, it's it's in between the Car 98 and the HDR. It's bad at quick scoping and it's bad at long range. It's bad at long range because it has slower bullet velocity and more bullet drop than the HDR. And it's bad at quick scoping because it's slower than the AX50, or slower than the Car 98 uh, in terms of aim down sight. So only run the car, only run the HDR. That's pretty much anybody across all the pro scene. We all agree on that. So if we're running a quick scope, this is what we're running. Now we're not running a true quick scope, right? Otherwise I wouldn't be running the suppressor, the, um, you know, the longer barrel. This is basically the best compromise between being an effective long range tool, but also still feeling pretty snappy. Um, especially in Warzone, you want to make sure you're running your suppressor. So I got sniper scope, monolithic suppressor, the long barrel, the F tac, and then uh, the tac laser. Oftentimes what players will do is they'll get rid of the F tac and they'll add sleight of hand. Uh, that's kind of personal preference. I personally would run it with the sleight of hand. The HDR, you're going to run the monolithic suppressor, the longest barrel, the HDR pro barrel, uh, the F tac stalk stalker scout, the tac laser, and sleight of hand. Once again, you can decide against sleight of hand and add a longer mag, but there's no point for an underbarrel because we're not going to be crouching or proning because that's just going to make us easier to hit. And then the other optics are just going to cause a longer aim down sight time. So cool. We are set up. We've got the settings right. We got the weapons we want to use. What's next? So we talked about it in the Controller Academy video, one of the techniques called drag scoping. Now, a lot of people were confused with this because typically what they do is what's called hard scoping. Now, hard scoping is where you just 
aim at your opponent for a really long time you wait to where you get to where you need to be and then you just stop and then you shoot on their head well we don't want to do that right because that's not very dynamic and frankly with the time to kill that we have in warzone they're going to end up frying you by the time that you finally wait and stop and get your eyes on target so what we do instead in the warzone academy is we do what's called drag scoping where we drag past the opponent click as we're dragging past now this is especially useful on controller and that's included in the controller guide because as we're dragging past an opponent you get aim assist and your aim will slow as you're getting on their body and then it'll speed up again so you can almost make it a timing that when you feel it slowing you take the shot right there with keyboard and mouse we don't have that luxury still I will use the exact same technique for keyboard and mouse. I'm going to drag past an opponent and it's all based off of timing and it's not based off of me stopping and then shooting. So the benefit of this all comes when we start talking about movement because in sniper battles, in war zone, everything that we do when we're sniping is all about, you know, being as dynamic as possible. We have to be able to get shots on target. We have to be able to chow targets without them killing us first time to kill is way too fast so where drag scooping gets really beneficial is where we start talking about movement because we need to be moving off our target and then we don't have time to wait to perfectly get it on target we're going to be moving all over the place and then we're going to have to drag past and click as we're dragging through our opponent rather than stopping okay waiting aiming locking it on shooting Does that make sense how do we prepare for that how do we prepare for that dynamic style of aim well, first off, you need to learn a technique called counter strafing. What counter strafing is, is it's looking at your opponent, and this is also very useful for ARs, SMGs, etc. It's looking at your opponent and being able to move your body and then counter move your mouse or controller. This applies to controller as well to stay on target. So it's your ability to strafe left and right and put the inverse movement into your mouse to stay on target now your body will eventually begin to talk to each other your left and right hand will be able to begin to do this naturally but at first as you're trying this you may not have this skill down you need to be knowing that when you're aiming at someone all the way across the map and you're making small adjustments with your left or right hand you know so that way you're not you're not as easy as, as a target you're able to stay on target with your mouse hand okay then it gets a little bit more advanced okay now we've gotten past counter strafing now we need to get into counter 90s and counter 90s is, is kind of going to get into when we talk about movement here in a moment. But basically, it's our ability to snap off a target, turn 90 degrees away from a target, and then snap back onto them. This is very useful for open field engagements. All the times in Warzone, we're maybe stuck behind a tree or in between covers. So we'll be here behind cover. We know the enemy's here. We'll take a shot, and we'll maybe B-hop into cover. Take a shot, maybe B-hop into cover. And all that time, love you, Automantle. Have you turned off? You still always go off. You're always there for me. I love you. All of this time, you're practicing your ability to turn away from an opponent and quickly snap back on. What you don't want to do is snap away from an opponent, and then as you snap back, you're snapping over, and then you're looking for him again. The same amount of aim that you use to aim left, snap back, get back on target to the right. And even if you miss that shot, you can continue your momentum. But we'll talk about that here in a moment when we get into counter sniping. Okay, but before we get on to counter sniping, let's talk a little bit more about movement. So in order to understand how to be a good sniper, you have to understand what your movement is doing to other players. So I'm going to have John here basically mirror what you're doing as a sniper. So if I'm trying to snipe John, 1v1 sniper battle, right? What is his movement doing to me? What a lot of people find themselves doing is they get tunnel vision. When they look down the scope, they don't do anything but aim. Obviously, this is super easy for me. I can clap them right now, no questions asked. So the next thing that you can do is scope and strafe. So John's going to be scoping and strafing. You can see here, his head is still at the exact same level the entire time. All I have to do is track him left and right. This is still a very, very easy shot for me to make. I may be off target maybe 2% of the time whenever he is, you know, just barely strafing and I don't have my reaction time there. Okay, so this clearly isn't it. Scoping and strafing is not enough. Right now, what I'm about to show you next is the absolute bare minimum. It's remaining scoped in, but while you're remaining scoped in, just doing little bunny hops in between your shots. 
So you'll take a shot and you'll just kind of like jump up and down or you'll crouch up and down. And from the player's perspective, I'll have John stand still and this is all it looks like. You just take your shot and notice it doesn't affect, because I've practiced my counter strafing, it doesn't affect me that much. But if you look at it from my perspective and I watch John do it, it's very jarring for me to track his head. This is not something that takes a lot of skill. Just a little bit of counter strafing and spamming the space bar makes him infinitely more difficult to hit than him standing still. Let's get into it a little bit more. So this is where things get a lot more dynamic and where you can really improve as a sniper. Everyone knows your movement speed slows whenever you aim down sight. Some guns are better. If you're aiming down sight with an MP5, you're actually going to move pretty quick while you're aiming down sight. If you aim down sight with a sniper, you are moving at a snail's pace. So what you need to do is in between shots unscope ideally you unscope and get a little bunny hop in but you can already tell i'll have john do it i'm gonna look at john without the jumps when he scopes in and unscopes i can instantly tell how much faster he starts moving he's much more difficult for me to track because he's moving more dynamically he can take one shot and then strafe you can still use your center reticle to track your target but once you're done taking that shot you begin to strafe at a faster movement speed and it makes you harder. And this is where things all come together. We talk about the counter 90 movement. Now we implement that into our sniping and watch how absolutely cracked it looks from the receiving end. He's going to unscope, check 90 degrees, sprint, and snap back onto target. And it looks absolutely insane. And frankly, just psychologically, it's going to scare the crap out of your opponents. Now, what he can be doing even better is continuing that momentum. I'll have him stand in the middle with a bunny hop like he started to do there. So from his perspective, any movement that I can be making to make things more predictable on his end, you can even just do something stupid like this where you crouch while you're reloading. I've seen that. People do that a lot. It makes it so difficult for someone to hit you in the head and then you just practice your counter 90s and get back on target. The whole purpose of movement and counter sniping is you have to stay dynamic. You have to be changing your head level, but you can only be so dynamic that you're able to quickly snap back onto target. Because if your movement's all over the place, but then by the time that you're trying to snap back onto target, you're standing still for five seconds, you've lost all value in your movement. So you need to have dynamic movement with the ability to at any point snap back onto target. And guess what? If I miss there, that's fine because I'm using the drag scope technique and I'm still you know, having really dynamic movement. And then I can try to snap on again. Maybe something's in my way. And then I can hit it right there. So the whole purpose is to be as stationary as little as possible. That's the importance of the drag scope. You're moving around like a madman. I'm not stopping to see if I'm aiming on my target. I'm going to aim through my target. Draw a line to where I think his head is going to be. And if he happens to pass it, I'm going to drag up. Wall bang him through a wall. 360 him. Miss him. Weapon swap. <laughs> You guys get the point. So what I'm going to show you next is a drill that you can do in-game in a practice lobby like this. Now, I am not teaching you guys how to quickscope. I don't find much value in quickscoping. Yes, it can be fancy. Yes, it can be fun in Warzone. But that's not what I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to teach you how to be successful as an average Joe in the Warzone. Don't be this average Joe. Okay. Begin with unscoping. Begin with throwing a little jump in there. Maybe you need to stop your jump for a second just to get steady and then take your shot. And then eventually you get to the point where you can do 90s. And then eventually you get to the point where you can incorporate slide cancels into your sniping. And we're going to talk about that in a future movement video and just completely go off on your opponents. Oh, and one more thing I have to emphasize. We talked about this in the five fatal mistakes. We talked about this as well as in the controller sniping video, but you cannot slow peak a target. So let's say we're here. John's over where we expect him to be. And what I see so many people doing is they come out with their sniper and they just barely inch their way out there trying not to show themselves too much. And then they just completely get their wig ripped off. Obviously, it's going to happen because what your opponent is doing is they're aiming where they expect you to come from. So you have to stop peeking the same angles. So if there's only one angle right here, you can like swing the angle a lot harder. Okay. But ideally, there's multiple angles. Let's say you pick a shot here. You see him there. Now you jump over and you pick him from another angle. Take him out over here. Right? He can't cover two angles at the same time. 
if you're stuck in, let's say, a window and you've only got one option, or you're stuck on a wall, and let's say you have to cross out into this open field over here, don't be peeking like this. I mean, sometimes you can do a little shoulder peek just to fake someone out. But when you're actually going to go full swing around that corner, even if you don't get the hit, right? So what I'm going to do right here, I may or may not hit it. This is going to be my first time trying. I'm going to try to swing out of this corner and hit a headshot on John. But even if I miss, I'm going to use that same counter 90 technique, snap right, right about here, go for a shot. And then I'm going to keep B hopping into this corner. So even if I miss, I'm still continuing my momentum to get into cover. So I miss, and I miss, but the whole purpose is to never do any of that. Okay, so one of the things that you can do to practice this aiming style of technique, all of this movement, making sure you're ready for the war zone, whatever it may be, it's all about good movement and target acquisition, right? So what I end up doing is I set up a bot lobby with recruits. I'm not worried about outgunning other players. I'm just trying to practice acquiring targets, maybe like setting myself up positioning, Start with as many as you're comfortable. You could start with one. You could start with two. I'm going to try to start here with four. I could probably go with more. Uh, make the recruit difficulty easy, but then to make it a little bit harder on yourself because in the war zone, what really counts with snipers is headshots. It's one shot, one kill. Go into the game rules. Go into gameplay. Make headshots only. And then also add health steal because that allows you, if you get shot, you can headshot someone and then get your health all the way back. And then from there, set it for however long you want. Maybe you want to have, at the beginning of every day, you want 100 sniper kills before you start off your day. That's going to be your warm-up. And the key here to remember, this is not about quick scoping. Obviously, there aren't too many big maps. Um, and a lot of this, really, you don't need to lead bullets that much in Warzone. So it's not like you need that long-range practice. What you need practice with is target acquisition. So we're going to start it up here. John's going to join us, so it'll be a little bit more competitive. So we've got someone else in there. Um, so I have four bots and John. So I have five bots in the lobby. All right, so once again, I wouldn't suggest going into this bot lobby if you haven't already mastered those first two techniques. Make sure you've mastered the art of counter strafing, where you can stay on your target the entire time. Once you've mastered that, make sure you master the art of what I'll call counter 90s, where you snap away from your target even if it's just by a little bit, just to get just to get that little bit of sprint in to reacquire your target. Then, once you get into here, the rules that I have whenever I'm playing against bots is you always have to reposition. Between every shot, you have to unscope and reposition. Because not only is this extremely useful, not only for sniper battles, but even just in a regular AR gunfight, if they're able to get a couple shots off on you, your aim is going to flinch through the roof. So, when you go in here, practice. Try to find an opponent, get them lined up roughly within the center of your screen with your crosshair. Once you've got them in the center of your screen, aim in. From there, drag past your opponent and try to hit a drag scope. Let's say you over drag and you miss. That's fine. Reposition and scope back in. So if I were to, if, let's say John's right here. I see John, I put him in the center of my screen. I over drag, that's fine. Reposition then try to hit him again. The whole purpose of this is target acquisition and staying dynamic and getting a lot of movement. Obviously, you can get fancy here and there and get some quick scopes, but that's not the that's not the purpose of this drill. If you need to, sit all the way in the back of the map. Just try to hold little angles like this. But at the very least, what you need to be doing is repositioning, not hard scoping, and in between every single shot, you're changing where you are. And maybe you'll call out your editor. You know, maybe that'll happen. Maybe you'll just put put a clip on him and it'll just completely embarrass him and ruin his day. But he'll he'll end up getting you back. Don't worry. <laughs> I love you, John. Good shot. Good shot, baby. Let's go. Look at that. John's doing it perfectly. Hits a shot, repositioned, goes in. This is how you get better. I have not been playing keyboard my entire life. I've only been playing keyboard and mouse like the last two years. So this is, this is something I'm still refining every single day, and it's something that I continue to get better at. Maybe get your friends involved. Maybe lose some friends over it. I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, this pretty much wraps up the advanced sniper guide. Let's go over it one more time. You've got drag scoping. You've got your movement. You've got your counter strafing. You have to make sure you're staying dynamic throughout the entire process, or you will get clapped. If you found value in any of this, if you think you can implement any of this to become a better sniper, Make sure 
to subscribe because the Warzone Academy provides as much value to you as possible. I really enjoy making these videos, but they take a lot of time. Make sure to show some love my way with a like and a subscribe if this has provided any value to your Warzone gameplay. Guys, I love y'all. If you want to see more of this, if you want to see some of this sniper gameplay implemented live, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. Big shout out to my man, John, for being super patient with me. I am the world's biggest procrastinator and the, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, John's a good friend. Let's just say that, chat. John's a, John's a good friend. He helps me out with a lot of these videos. We would not be putting out nearly the amount of content without him. So big love to him. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Nobody's on. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.